and for that I need my magic pliers always being aware of this meter needle at the top of the camera that you don't accidentally bend it one of the problems is if you bend that uh, needle it will make the adjustments for the meter will be out now trying to get the adjustments correct afterwards if the needles not the right shape so it doesn't swing quite through the right arc is very very difficult it's not a problem you want to have to deal with I'm going to remove the tripod socket I've got to be very careful very aware of that meter needle at the top so I can't press down on it on the camera from the top tripod socket the screws are, the heads of them are rusty but they're not loose if they'd given any grief they could have been left alone that would not have caused an issue just getting out the little insert for the film cassette there what am I up to? I'm still dealing with this film advanced stuff. Okay, so the sprocket shaft, now that we've got the rewind button off the end of that, has a single screw driving it, the same as a retina. Okay. Press out the shaft. I should be able to lift that bush out now at the top. And there's the clutch. The clutch is exactly the same sort of thing as you'd get in a retina. This is very sticky. Certainly needs some attention. The screw here on the top of the release lever, we'll get that off, or the shaft for the release lever, that's got a return spring there, put that aside, and I'll drop that release lever out at the base of the camera, of course that's got a little spring on the arm of that. Here I'm unhooking the spring from the rewind button catch. That screw is seems to be very tight. Our film advanced shaft here, that's held in with three screws, just as it would be with a retina. The screws don't appear to be loose. The grease here is quite dried out. There's no reason to believe anyone's been in here since this camera was made which would be a while ago now I've got all the screws, I think there's one no, none of them are still hanging up but that shaft but doesn't want to lift out um, that bush is uh, well, the whole shaft I think is stuck in the film advance and the take up spool. Yeah, it's coming out now. Yeah, all that, all of this is dried out grease and it was gluing things together.
is the take up spool has a metal bush in the base of it. That's all the film advance stuff out. That's really sticky. Okay, this part at the front of the camera, I want that off. There's a few areas under there that might need some attention. So we've got two screws here, three actually. Some of the things under here I'm not taking apart. Unless you're really looking for trouble, you leave them alone. So that plate should lift off. That flash wire stays with the plate. This plastic shim can come off. Under here, what do we see? Well, this is our coupling wire to the shutter from the meter circuit. This business here, this is the meter is pivoted at that point. Our camera, the shutter, that cam in it presses on this and it will swing this across. And you can see that meter needle swinging across as I swing that movement across. So that's what that is. Now be aware there's a tiny return spring. I've got some filth on my tweezers here. There's a tiny return spring here. It's very light and easily lost and it just sits on the front of that pin there. So I'll just lift that off and put it to one side. This whole pulley arrangement I'm leaving well enough alone. You generally don't need to do anything with that. I'm checking that this front plate is tight. Sometimes this is loose. If it's loose on the camera, you're probably going to have to get in and deal, deal with it in some way. There'll, either, there'll be a screw under the leatherette at these points. This piece here is also screwed onto the back of that front plate. So if this is loose, you're going to have to take that plate off to get to those screws. Fortunately, we don't have to do that. That, I think, is as far as we need to take the retina apart in this today. I want to get this filth off the base plate here. That's corrosion and there's a bit of adhesive and stuff there. And I've got to get rid of all the grease. But first of all, I need to gather together the mechanical parts here that are going to go through the ultrasonic cleaner. So I'll get them together. So normally, I just, all the screws, all the levers, things of that nature I put through the cleaner. I don't put springs through typically. Springs are too easily lost, so I do not do that. The plastic stuff I don't put through the ultrasonic cleaner. That bush doesn't need to be cleaned. You can tell by the way this stuff sticks to my tweezers that some of this grease is really gummy. With grease like that, it can easily vary the way it behaves dependent on the ambient temperature. So on a warm day you might find that there's no problem at all, that things are move smoothly if somewhat damp, but in cold weather the things might not move at all. They might be frozen in place. That is something that will only get worse over time. That looks like about it really. I've got a those chrome trims. The upper chrome trim will just need a wipe with some naphtha, but this one here is going to need some attention. And I've got to recover the spring from this lever, this release lever, and put it to one side while this goes through the cleaner. If I can get it to come off. 
they're a bit tricky to get off the post but um, they're so vulnerable that it's worth struggling a little bit to get them off somewhere to safety at this point rather than leave them with the likelihood of it all going very very bad if you lose that spring or damage it in the cleaning process. I'm going to undo that screw and just take the uh, wavy washer out of there. That's pretty good condition. Often these are a bit uh, rusty. So that all looks good. Okay, let me get these pieces away to the ultrasonic cleaner. I'll start cleaning this. Okay, well with the parts back from the ultrasonic cleaner, I'll start putting a few pieces into this camera, I think. I'll start with the rewind. Now this I have taken apart and cleaned and lubricated. Now that rewind shaft is plastic. It looks like the bush is plastic too, but it's not. It's anodized aluminium. It just looks like shiny plastic. Right, and while I've got this here, I'm going to put the tripod socket back in place. So I'll start with the film cassette bush. And get this tripod socket in place. You can see that I've been busy cleaning the body bottom of this camera and got rid of all that caked on adhesive and um, corrosion. Of course I've got to be very careful of that meter needle at the top of the camera that's very exposed to damage. Right, okay, so that part's done. And I'll start putting the film advance stuff back into the camera body. I've got all my parts here from the ultrasonic cleaner. I can see that one of the springs made it in there and got back out unscathed. This is nice and clean now. All that filthy dried out grease is gone. You can see I've got the base plate nice and clean. I've got all that adhesive off there. That's been through the ultrasonic cleaner too. That just looks like new. So, I will start with the film advance shaft. I need the bush. And there will be three nickel plated screws. Fairly clean because they won't have had adhesive on them. That hold that in place. Those three should do nicely. I'll just put my two chromed ones to one side so I don't mix them up now. Otherwise that'll cause me grief. Here's the other one. Here it is. Okay. That's good. As long as I don't start putting my, one of my two chromed screws somewhere else, I'll be as good as gold. Right. The take-up spool. I'm going to lubricate this take-up film advance shaft with some graphite grease because this has served me well in the past. Now this looks... I know it, it's shiny and looks like new but I can tell from the wear patterns that actually it's done very little work. Because the film advanced bush here does do a fair bit of work. It's under a fair bit of stress and you know it tends to show it. I'm just putting some graphite grease into that spring so that the coils roll over each other smoothly. And that looks very good to me. I'm going to take some synthetic grease, run it around these cam surfaces. This is where the release lever runs and I want them to run smoothly. That looks good. I've got my film, my take up spool. 
Now the end with the hole in the bottom, the round hole, not the one with the slot. The bush goes into the round hole. And I'll put this in the back of the camera, slot side up. Yeah, film advanced shaft can go in here. And I'll put that in its rest position which is right here where the lock lever would be facing along the camera body. I'll get three screws in place to hold that. Except that my screwdriver has just gone AWOL. Let's go another one. Yep, something's not lining up. That's better. Oh, that screw's just fallen over in the hole. Let's see if I can get that to line up correctly. Yeah, it's going in there. And the correct screwdriver has just surfaced. Okay, that's those in place. I'll just check that the spool moves freely. It does. That's good. At the top of the camera, I need to put the clutch in place. The clutch is, of course, three pieces. You've got the core, the spring, and the outer piece. And I'm going to lubricate this with graphite grease too. So I'll just run some graphite grease into that outer drum and then assemble this lot together. So taking the centre part and the spring, the little tab on that spring must drop into that notch in the centre component and I'm going to lower my crimp pliers over the top, pull that in, keeping that crimp, that lug in place, slide the outer over it the pliers away and here's my clutch fully assembled and it rolls much smoother in one direction than the other and that's the right direction. So a little bit of grease through the centre, drop that into the top, Just rotate that till it engages with the take up spool, that's in place. Here's the guide bush for the top of the film advance shaft and I need to force a bit of grease into this pinion set here. So I'll run some grease onto there, pressed it with my thumb and the hydraulic pressure just pushes that grease across and makes sure that it gets everywhere it needs to go. Just checking that that's engaged. Seems to be. So a plain screw at this side. That's where you would have a shoulder screw on a retina camera because it'd be supporting the cocking rack. Of course, we, there is no cocking rack with this camera. Now, that bush goes in, plain side up. 
countersunk side down. Where's the uh, screw for that? Here. And where's the ball? That's more important. It is hiding. Why is it hiding? Well, that pull didn't get away very far. Let's put a bit of grease around the top of that shoulder screw. The pull goes there. That shoulder screw in position. That's better, it was binding on that screw. Make sure that pull moves freely, it does. Okay, I can fit its spring in place. Did I just put that spring on back to front? I flame and no, that pawl, I did. Right, and the spring, I'll just swing this around so I can see what I'm doing better. The spring acts to push the ball towards the centre to keep the ball in contact with the gear that we're about to put in place. Like that. The shaft is looking fine. The gear is here. Run some grease around the inside edge of that. That's fine. Now I'll just position that shaft because I can see I haven't got the uh, release lever in place yet. You know that looks fine, that's, that's positioned well enough. This spring goes on there, normally I just give that a, a little wipe with the synthetic grease just to protect it from corrosion as much as anything because uh, high carbon steels are pretty good at rusting away if you don't look at them hit them any moisture or something on them but a little bit of a little bit of grease does a wonders make sure I get this on the right way Now, of course, we don't have a gear on the top of this. We have this lever instead. Which has to run in the body here. I'm just putting a bit of synthetic grease there. I've got to remember how this thing goes because I can never, never remember.
that looks right. Now see if I can get this in place. Let's put something underneath there to support that shaft. Making sure I've got this square engaged. Here's the screw. Oh, I just did something wrong there, didn't I? Guess I haven't tensioned up my film advance yet. That was a faux pas. Okay, well, we, can, we can soon do that. Right, but basically that'll swing through an arc like that. But I need to put some tension on the film advance. Right, I'm going to get to it.